Welcome back to Law and Crime. I'm Judge Ashley Wilcott. Happy to be with you this afternoon. Listen, we got a lot to talk about. If you've been following this case of Florida versus John John Chuck, I mean, there is all kinds of stuff to talk about in this case. Just a reminder: the whole issue is not did he drop his five-year-old Phoebe over the bridge, but instead, rather. Was he insane at the time that he committed that act? And that's the issue that has to be addressed by the jury and decided. I'm really excited to have on with us right now, and we've heard from him before, Josh Solomon. He is the reporter who is there, has been in court with the Tampa Bay Times. Josh, thanks again for joining us today. Ashley, thank you so much for having me. Now, I'm going to jump right into it. Exorcism. Tell, you know, most of us think of movies when we think of exorcism. So tell me, what is what is the, about today that that's the theme? Yeah, so um, it's been previously reported that uh, in the hours before John Chuck went to the bridge and, and dropped Phoebe, that he went to churches uh, and inquired about both baptism and exorcism. Now, we heard from one of the priests today, um, uh, a priest, uh, I should say, uh, Father, Father, gosh, I don't remember his first name, but Father Swengros. Uh, and he uh, was somebody who John Chuck had talked to uh, the day before. Uh, and, and again, it's been previously reported that, that John Chuck asked him about exorcism. But on the stand today, uh, Swengros denied it, said that he didn't recall any conversation about exorcism. Um, he said in his deposition, he said that perhaps uh, that was, you know, written in a police report somewhere. But as far as any conversation that the two of them had about exorcism, Swengross today said that, that he didn't remember having that conversation, which is just a little interesting detail. It, it means that, you know, perhaps the, the narrative that's been previously reported is, you know, it, perhaps it's slightly off or, or, or it's based or, or the police got something wrong. You know, it, it's hard to tell. So, you know, and it could be a pretty big deal. I'm assuming that, you know, the exorcism piece is something that the defense wants to be able to utilize in saying he was insane at the time he committed the act. And that's when he went to the, you know, he's having mental health issues at the exact time. So I'm assuming, you know, the prosecution may rely on that to say, listen, there was no discussion about an exorcism. He knew what he was doing and he knew that it was wrong and that there were consequences to what he did. How else do you see it coming out or being used if you do? I mean, I, you're, you're probably right uh, in that that would have been another thing that the defense could have pointed to to say that uh, that their client, John Chuck, was insane. Um, I mean, they, they've elicited a lot of strange testimony from witnesses, uh, people who've talked about um, that John Chuck said he was he was the pope or uh, or or. Um, you know, he wanted uh, his lawyer uh, his, in a custody battle, his, 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 his custody lawyer to read from a Swedish Bible. He wanted uh, Father Swe uh, Swengros to read from a Swedish Bible. So, you know, I think that perhaps it would have been another thing that the defense could have shown the jury. Like, yeah, in addition to all this, he also, you know, went asking for an exorcism, which sounds sort of absurd. Um, and I, I, I think without it, maybe that they don't, obviously they can't rely on it. I'm not sure how much pivots on that testimony not being there. Right. So let me ask you this, and I love that you're there at the front lines because you're getting to see all of this, and I know have such great opinions about what's been going on. The fact mm -hmm. that the testimony, as I understand it, was maybe the police miswrote that, didn't do it correctly. You know, they're, they're, I don't remember that at all, him discussing exorcism. I Basically, my word's not his. I think the police got it wrong. Do you think that affects the credibility of the police in this case? It, you know, it's hard to say, uh, you know, obviously I'm not on the jury um, and I, I suppose we'll have to see how that's characterized in, in closing arguments. Um, uh, I don't know. Most of the police have have uh, as, as as far as I know, have already been called. I don't know if we're going to see any more sworn officers on the stand. So, you know, I, I really don't know nece necessarily what the purpose of, of, of getting having Father Swengros say that uh, on the stand that that John Chuck didn't ask about an exorcism. I don't know if, if he was expected to. Frankly, I mean, he, he, he in his deposition, he said that, that John Chuck didn't ask him. So I, I don't I don't know how this uh, it's I think it's it's too early to tell for now to see how this plays into the greater narrative. All right. And I have one last burning question because we see the Bible sure. there. How wrapped is the jury on things like the actual Bible and looking at it? How are they reacting to those things? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that when when there's evidence like that and it's being uh, moved around, you know, their eyes are on it. Frankly, I'm fascinated by the Bible. <laughs> Uh, the Bible is, uh, is is tremendously interesting. I mean, it's it's enormous. It's like six or eight inches high, um, uh, thick, I should say. I mean, it's it's 
it's it's it's a very strange uh, item, and I, I think when when it's moving around the courtroom, they're watching it. Yeah, this is an unbelievable trial to follow. Josh, I can't thank you enough. Josh Solomon with the Tampa Bay Times. Thanks again for being with us thank today. Thank you so much.